Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Wassbauer, and I wanted to tell patients a little bit about scalp micropigmentation. What is scalp micropigmentation, or SMP sometimes it's called? It's also known as trichopigmentation, and sometimes when people refer to the trichopigmentation, they refer to something as a little less permanent. But whichever thing you call it, trichopigmentation or SMP, it is an indispensable part of the comprehensive surgeon's practice. Using tiny microneedles to create microscopic dots, grayscale pigment is applied to mimic the appearance of dense hair. Anytime pigment is applied with a needle to human skin, it qualifies as a tattoo. So by definition, scalp micropigmentation is medical grade micro tattooing. But SMP is not your grandpa's tattoo. When it's used on a shaved but a balding head, the appearance of well-placed SMP can fool even the closest observer into thinking that the shaved head is a style choice instead of expert camouflage. When employed to enhance the density of existing hair or to supplement a comprehensive hair transplant, the naked eye will see fullness and overall hair coverage where no additional hair exists. Scalp micropigmentation is how the expert hair surgeon becomes neither technician nor clinician, but more magician. The characteristics of SMP are interesting. SMP is microscopic, pointillistic, like tiny dots, and shallow medical grade tattooing. Above all, the desired effect is that of a natural appearance for the patient. To achieve this, needle penetration depths are shallow, usually 0.5 of a millimeter across the scalp. But because the scalp has only three layers at the top, here in the vertex or the crown, and five layers at its edges, kind of all the way around, the needle depth must be constantly adjusted to keep the pigment in that topmost layer of the scalp. That part of the skin is known as the epidermis. This requires specialized machines, needles, and pigments, specifically made for scalp micropigmentation. Now, in the past, they did this with tattoo needles, and it didn't turn out as well. Additionally, since the scalp has the highest concentration of oil glands anywhere on the body, pigment must not be allowed to penetrate too deeply. Otherwise, the pigment will spread into the fat, into the oils, and it will lead to significant and blotchy discoloration. An easy example of this pigment error can clearly be seen in those patients who have allowed a conventional tattoo artist to decorate their scalp. Because in these cases, tattoo ink is generally placed deeper than is optimal or with a larger needle, causing it to spread underneath the skin and lead to kind of a blotchy appearance. Also, if a conventional tattoo pigment is used, the color can change from either black or brown to a shade that would not normally occur on a human head like blue or orange. So SMP is an art unlike normal tattooing. Generally speaking, SMP is not supposed to imitate the appearance of hair as a line, not as a line, because all natural hair moves if it has any length to it. If a hair does not move, but is surrounded by moving hair, it does not look natural and it stands out instead of blending. In actuality, SMP is supposed to imitate the appearance of the pore that the hair comes out of. It's imitating the appearance of a very short hair or a hair on end. Also, in most cases, SMP is not intended to match the hair color of the patient. Since the follicle itself is a tiny hole or pore in the scalp with between one and three hairs growing out of it, the follicle looks like a tiny circular shadow from a normal viewing distance. And SMP is trying to imitate that shadow. In essence, this technique is taking advantage of the way that we see and creating a visual illusion of density. Visual inputs from your eyes are interpreted by the brain. It's a process called visualization, which has many different meanings. But in this case, we're using it for that brain process. And what it does is it turns a two-dimensional image into a three-dimensional one. It's a little known fact that black tattoo pigment is often created by mixing many different colors together. Black tattoos can also be created simply with carbon, like coal or ash. In fact, that carbon is some of the most ancient tattooing that we have evidence for. It is also less concerning if you use carbon because so many ingredients in tattoo pigments are known to be toxic or carcinogenic. Preferred SMP pigment is a carbon only pigment, not a mix of all the colors of the rainbow. This allows the SMP artist to create grayscale dots, which imitate the shadows of pores most accurately. This concept of black tattoo ink being a mix of colors 
or just plain black can be difficult to grasp at first for those unfamiliar with the physiology of tattoos. But to help you understand, think of the difference between a child using a black crayon to color a drawing or mixing all the colors in the box together to create black. If the child uses the black crayon, then they can choose to make light black, which is kind of gray or dark black. But if all the colors are mixed together, the only option is the pseudo black of the color mix with various alternative colors occasionally peeking through like at the edges or such. Use of a grayscale pigment is why expertly placed S&P will blend with any hair color and will look natural even if that person's hair grays or changes color over time. Like if you're dyeing your hair a different color. How does SMP work with hair surgery to create optimal looks? Well, SMP works best in an all or nothing manner. It looks good on a head that is completely shaved because it can fill in any bald spot to look like shaved hair. The SMP artist will fill in the blank areas with a density to match the surrounding hair density, generally the back, the top, and the front of the head. In these cases, patients can either skip surgery entirely or get hair transplants to place at least some real hair in the hairline or the crown to add some realistic texture and appearance. An average number of grafts here, a good you know, density goal for this would be about 10 to 20 grafts per square centimeter. This helps because patients are gratified just being able to touch some hair on their head, even if they are going for the shaved look. SMP also works very well in heads that have hair everywhere, but just not as dense as the patient would like. This is something like over 20 grafts per square centimeter. So if a patient already had a hair transplant, but did not have enough hair to achieve their density goals, SMP might be the next best step in the treatment instead of additional surgery, you know? Similarly, those patients who have scalp visibility that bothers them, but not enough space to fit hair grafts, surgically without damaging existing hair, find that SMP makes the whole area look improved without surgery. This kind of goes with the concept that SMP also works best in patients who have a high contrast between their hair and their scalp skin due to the optical illusion characteristics of the scalp micropigmentation itself. Thus, very dark hair on a light scalp background is the perfect use case for SMP. Lighter hair colors or graying or white hair or even dyed hair colors, pink or green, also have a superior outcome from S for SMP provided the proper gray scale pigment is used. Sometimes an SMP practitioner will try various versions of a pigment to see what works best. And this is also known as a test patch. A good SMP practitioner will usually do a test patch just to show you what it looks like, see how it blends, see if you like it, help you experience what a test patch is like, and also to test for any kind of allergic reaction, which be extremely rare. I've never actually heard of one being documented. SMP is often used for hiding the scars of a hair surgery. Whether it's the multi-dotted scattergram of scars from a follicular unit excision surgery, which is also known as an FUE, or the linear scar of a traditional surgery method, SMP can visually diminish, and in some cases nearly erase a scar's appearance. But be aware that scars, all scars, are the most demanding and difficult situation for placing SMP. It requires considerable effort and skill to get optimal results because the pigment placed into a scar often spreads, fades, and changes color in unpredictable patterns. There are a couple of unique uses for scalp micropigmentation, and they are all related to hair surgery, including, I'll give you a couple examples. In patients who have a previous linear scar from a hair restoration surgery, but they want to shave their head for an FUE hair transplant. In those cases, SMP can be used intraoperatively to camouflage a previous linear scar during the surgery. This helps the patient to camouflage their shaved donor area for one to two weeks while the remaining donor area is regrowing to help camouflage. SMP placed in this circumstance is often temporary, but additional sessions can be performed once healing is complete, if it's desired. For those patients who anticipate a higher hairline as they age, combination or hybrid SMP can reframe the face with a lower, more youthful hairline with temporary pigments for the anterior hairline edge, that's this, right and through here, and more permanent pigments anticipating the mature hairline. So basically this area back here would be the permanent, more permanent pigment. 
and right in front of it, you'd have a temporary pigment hairline, knowing that that was eventually going to go away. So these areas right in through here are going to be the ones that actually have some change over time in anticipation of the normal changes that would happen on a slightly recessed or a mature hairline. SMP can be used in patients with burns and scarring alopecias once they've healed in order to restore a more natural appearance. This type of restorative medical pigmentation is intrinsically rewarding. And in my opinion, it's the highest, best use of this art form. It can renew a person's self-confidence and be completely life-changing. But this type should only be attempted by experts since the consequences of further disfiguring an individual can be really tragic. Disfigured patients who've received hair transplants from unregulated or unlicensed medical professionals can use micropigmentation to restore a more natural appearance. Unfortunately, black market or medical tourism botched hair transplants have proliferated exponentially in recent years. This is a patchy moth-eaten appearance for both the donor and the recipient areas. Cases such as these will commonly choose to go with a shaved head look if the damage has been extensive. And a reverse hair transplant where you take hair from here and put it back here doesn't usually work. As a matter of fact, it hasn't worked. It's something that now we avoid. But with scalp micropigmentation, the final result can still be remarkably natural and totally satisfactory for the patient. Transitioning patients who experience hair loss prior to or as part of their change, most often from male to female or post-facial feminization surgery, can use SMP to enhance the density of their preferred hairstyle. Scalp micropigmentation is particularly useful when hormonal therapy is unable to restore full hair density where previous male pattern hair loss existed or where scars from facial feminization surgery have left an odd pattern of hair regrowth. SMP should be avoided in certain situations. Scalp micropigmentation can look either like hair that is more dense or like shaved hair, but just as it would be odd to have only part of your head shaved, so too does SMP look odd when there's a mix of haired and non-haired areas adjacent to each other on a scalp, like in a crown with a really thick kind of rind of hair, but nothing in the center. So if you have a completely bald area next to an area with longer hair, about anything over three millimeters and relatively good density on that surrounding hair, about 30 follicles per square centimeter, you should probably avoid scalp micropigmentation, at least until you consider whether or not you're gonna put more hair in that area with surgery. In these cases, transplanting hair to the balding area may make the patient a more suitable candidate for an all over scalp micropigmentation solution. Some scalp skin is unsuited to scalp micropigmentation. For instance, in some scalps, the pigment may not stay even after repeated attempts. Some scalps are too oily or flaky for the pigment to be applied effect effectively. Even after additional scalp prep methods, there's some additional things that you can do to help these scalps. But even sometimes it may not work in those patients and those patients would not be suitable candidates for effective SMP. Active scalp conditions where the inflammation is involved like a scarring alopecia or psoriasis or even alopecia areata are particularly at risk for poor outcomes. And these scalps should not have SMP applied until the areas are completely stable and disease-free for two to three years. SMP should be avoided after a hair transplant for at least a year to give time for the newly transplanted hair to grow in. Since this process takes 11 to 12 months, it can be difficult to wait, but patience is best because hair grows in with differing densities and at different rates, and optimal scalp micropigmentation takes this variable into account. Without knowing where other hair will grow, SMP would be placed too densely in one area and not densely enough in another, leading to an uneven appearance. Another reason to wait is that the same cells that remove pigment are the cells that are present in the skin during the healing process. And since the healing takes a full year, SMP placed before that time risks premature fading and suboptimal results. With any pigment in the skin, the appearance changes over time. Permanent pigments can fade and temporary pigments never leave. UV light in particular will fade scalp micropigmentation pigments more quickly than otherwise. So sun protection for the head after a treatment is essential. Well-placed scalp micropigmentation can last five to 10 years, with some patients preferring a touch-up session yearly to enhance that 3D appearance. In cases where scalp micropigmentation needs to be removed from a scalp, 
A tattoo removal laser can accomplish this in as little as a single session with little or no discomfort or downtime for the patient. So there's not a ton of risk here, but some patients might require some additional sessions if the pigment has been repeatedly applied or placed or migrated deeper in the layers of the scalp skin. But the hair growth is usually undisturbed. This should be contrasted with the removal of a traditional tattoo from a scalp, which definitely risks hair loss and is yet another reason that traditional tattooing supplies and equipment should not be used to do scalp micropigmentation. Two additional possible treatments for scalp micropigmentation removal include one thing called salabrasion, sala being salt with saline in the area, and topical tattoo removal creams, both of which can be effective, although sometimes irritating options. They do take time. Only those who are trained and specialized in scalp micropigmentation should perform these treatments. And in some locations around the world, only trained and licensed medical professionals should operate dermatologic lasers. So be careful who you go to. You only get your health, you know, once. It's, nothing can replace it if you, if you have some scarring or a, a negative effect. One final word of warning. Scalp micropigmentation removal is typically an all or nothing endeavor. In other words, it's suboptimal to remove just selected small patches of micropigmentation because once it's cleared, that spot will never match the surrounding older micropigment dots around it again. New SMP in a single area will always look crisp and dark, different from the surrounding SMP, especially if it's a little older. So if the scalp micropigmentation becomes unsightly in one single area, or it's overlapped after over applied, pardon me, if it's over applied after several treatments, the whole of the pigmented area needs to be taken back to square one with all the pigment removed. Thankfully, this is often not a problem at all with professionally placed scalp micropigmentation. And the removal of an entire pigmented head, which I've had to do several times, can be accomplished in a single 30 minute session with only minor discomfort and little or no downtime for the patient. So now, how do you find expert SMP? Because tattooing artists with expertise in artistic tattooing are common, but SMP specialists are clearly not as common, and they can be identified by their training and their body of work. Most SMP practitioners who take the time to specialize in SMP will only perform micropigmentation, and they won't do generalized body art tattooing because the equipment, the techniques, and the pigments are all different. If the artist works independently of a hair surgeon's office, look for clear, reproduced patterns of photos, like always straight on, always one down like this, always you know to the side, down like that. So you need to have consistent lighting and positioning for evidence of the different types of cases that they spe specialize in, and photos are essential. Cell phone photos are notorious for distorting head and scalp images unless the settings are adjusted. So those should probably be avoided. And if you can see scalp micropigmentation examples in person, the evaluation is even better. With their expertise surgically, surgically creating detailed hair patterns, many hair surgeons will also perform their own SMP. And you could look at their results as well. International trainers with long histories in this field include a couple of people who I'm not affiliated with, the Finishing Touches Group in the UK and Beauty Medical out of Italy both of whom provide a certificate of training to their trainees. There is no international licensing body for scalp micropigmentation pr practitioners. And medical grade tattooing is still less common than the body art tattooing, obviously, and less you know, necessary. A serious hair surgeon will have a network of references and resources to help take care of their patients if they themselves do not perform specialized treatments like SMP. So in conclusion, the future of SMP is bright. Scalp micropigmentation is already an indispensable tool for the well-rounded hair transplant surgeon, although additional high quality training opportunities are still needed. The use of SMP will probably still continue to expand. Even now, advances in pigment applying technology with improved needles, equipment, high pressure needleless machines, advanced pigments, they're all beginning to improve the results for patients worldwide. It's probable, I think, that all subsequent hair transplant will incorporate some degree of scalp micropigmentation in order to optimize patient outcomes in the future. I hope this has worked for you, given you a big, good overview and answered some of the questions that maybe Dr. Google couldn't give to you. We'll see you later.